Hello everyone, uh, this is Android Broadcast. Uh, today is our first uh, English uh, episode. Uh, and today we will talk about Dagger Hill dependency injection and its future. Uh, and we have a special guest from Google, uh, Manuel. Hi. Uh, Privyat. <laughs> How are you? Uh, uh, Manuel, uh, l um, can you tell... Uh, to ask something about you, about your experience. Yeah, so I'm Manuel Bibo. I'm an Android uh, engineer in the uh, Google uh, rela and, uh, developer relations team here at Google. And basically I was a former uh, Android engineer at Capital One. So I was, uh, was working in uh, Nottingham in the UK as well as in Washington DC in, in the US. And, and now I'm working at Google, I'm based in Spain. And right now, like I'm working on, on coroutines, on Jetpack Compose, and obviously uh, on Hilt, as we are going to be talking uh, about today. Dagger and Hilt, basically, both of them. And, and yeah, that's, that's mainly what I do uh, at Google. So my job, uh, you might say, uh, okay, what is a developer relations engineer? So basically, uh, we do two things. So the first thing is what you say, uh, what you see right now. So we... we talk a little bit in podcasts, in, uh, in conferences, we do a little bit of outreach. So we write articles and we are exposed to, to the community. But then the other part of the job that people don't really see is the feedback that we, we give to the internal, internal teams. So for example, like in Hilt in particular, I've been in touch very closely working with the Hilt team. And so I deliver feedback. Uh, I'm trying to see how the community is using the library. And then I usually myself, I test it out first and make sure that everything works as expected. And then like uh, as any other developer out there, I file feature requests, I give feedback. It's kind of like the first point of contact uh, before everything or anything, any library goes out to, to the community. So that's basically what we do. It's a very interesting job. And it's obviously a lot of fun to be in touch with you all. It's uh, you are great. You, I um, mean, you deliver great applications and you deliver great feedback. And it's so nice to meet you all. Mm -hmm. Where are you are right now? Uh, I'm based in, in 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 Barcelona at the moment in Spain. Mm -hmm. It's a That's lovely great. city. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is Hilt? Can you? Uh, uh, make a short introduction in that and uh, why it was it was it uh, why the hilt uh, replace uh, dagger android what was wrong sure, um, yeah i mean <laughs> what was wrong is not a short answer, <laughs> answer to give you but uh, hilt is a new dependency injection library that we announced in, in june this year and basically what we are trying to do is simplify dependency injection in android uh, so we will see later like a little bit a, mo a bit more of the context of why we might need this library but basically it's gonna remove a lot of boilerplate to the dependency injection in android apps so like all, if you want to do dependency injection uh, manually uh, on your own you might have to do a lot of things you, you might have to code a lot and create a lot of code for for that to work with hilt all that is simplified um, with few annotations uh, as we will see everything will be ready for for you and um, apply the, the proper you know dependency injection techniques okay sounds great uh Everyone okay. who are watching right now uh, can ask questions. Uh, we will uh, uh, um, we will uh, talk about everything about everything in speed, in uh, APIs, and future uh, after short introduction after presentation that uh, Manuel will show for us. And let's start. Sure. Yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, for the people watching uh, online, I'm gonna be showing a presentation, but then I'm gonna be very descriptive for those who are listening in the podcast. So if, if you can switch to the presentation mode, um, I'm gonna be like talking, like, uh, there we go. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about uh, why uh, do we need dependency injection in our applications, uh, a little bit of health, uh, what it is and how you can use it. And then we are going to see that uh, we are going to spend some time talking about dependency injection containers 
and uh, what they do in, in, in Hilt, for example, which map to a component. Uh, you might be familiar with Dagger already. Uh, so Dagger component is basically a dependency injection container. And then probably uh, we, we are going to talk about uh, what's coming next, about the future of the library. So just to recap a little bit, uh, I mean, it's weird having a, a podcast or a video about dependency injection without explaining what it is, because not everyone <laughs> might, might know it. So, so that we all are on the same page, uh, we can define uh, dependency injection as a design pattern where a class is going to receive dependencies instead of the class creating those dependencies, uh, dependencies itself. And we can, uh, we can see later why uh, creating the dependencies of a class in the class itself, like hard-coded, is a, it's a bad idea because it's going to be uh, harder to refactor if everything is hard-coded. It's going to be uh, difficult to test because otherwise you, you cannot like replace your dependencies with, you know, with a fake or with a mock. And uh, talking a little bit about the past, like dependency injection is a pretty old technique. And it's not only for Android, it's a, like a well-recognized uh, pattern used in programming in general. And it comes with a like, like few ideas in mind, right? So it, it comes with, for example, like the different, uh, the solid principles that we had, the, the single responsibility principle, where, for example, a class should only have one reason to change. Uh, and so if, if that's the case, like uh, a class might have other dependencies because they, a class should be uh, isolated, right? It should have a, a particular concern, which brings us to this uh, separation of concern, which is also another like old design principle where its class uh, should address a particular thing, should be in charge of something. And if we follow all of this, it means that a class with a particular responsibility uh, with a particular concern means that it has to delegate work to other classes. And, and those other classes might be the dependencies of a class. So for example, you can think of a music player that might have a dependency or, on a database. Um, for example, here, uh, the, the people watching the presentation, they can see that the music player might have two dependencies, for example. It might have a, a database where it can load all the, the basically, the, the, the music, and then the codecs, the list of codecs that it accepts. So with, without dependency injection, with no dependency injection, those, those uh, classes are going to be hard-coded in, in the implementation of music player. So you might be, for example, the database might create a SQL database, or like the codecs might, might be a, a hard-coded list of uh, codecs, for example, FLAC. And so that's, uh, uh, that's, for example, whenever you have these hard-coded dependencies in a class, whenever you have to build an object of it, for example, a music player, it's going to be pretty fast because you don't have to do anything. You just call the constructor, which might be empty, and then you can just call methods on it. And while that might be like uh, the beginning might look pretty simple because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about the dependencies because they are hard coded. It comes with a lot of problems. So for example, as I was saying before, like you cannot reuse this music player. Like you cannot, for example, uh, create a music player with a different uh, music because the database is hard coded or with different codecs. They are, you, you are not able to replace them, for example, at runtime or, or anything like that. And also, like testing is a problem because this music player has a, a database hard-coded in its implementation. So if you wanted to use an in-memory database, for example, it would be impossible. And obviously, it, it's going to make it very difficult to refactor because you don't see at a glance the, the different dependencies and what the, the class is doing. So with dependency injection, those dependencies that are hard-coded are going to be passed into the, the class. For example, in this case, the music player. So now the constructor of the music player can take two dependencies, can take the database and can uh, uh, take the list of codecs. So this is what it's called uh, construction injection, because we are passing those dependencies at construction time. But uh, there are other types of uh, injection, like setter injection. So you can pass those dependencies in a setter. So 
Uh, and those now, the dependencies are explicitly declared at, at creation time. And because to build a, a music player, you need to build those objects first. Now you have, whenever you want to instantiate or create uh, an object or an instance of this class, first you need to create the, the, the instances of its dependencies. So for example, in order to create a music player now, you have to create an object of a database and then the list of codecs. And whenever you have those dependencies, then you can create the, the music player. So because this might be a little bit problematic, it's not problematic, but like if imagine that you have to create multiple times this music player, it might be a little bit of, of boilerplate code if you do this manually, because you always have to create those dependencies or, or get those dependencies to create new instances of it, of the class. So this is what's called construction logic. The construction logic is all the logic in your app that is only meant to create other types or their classes. Um, versus the business logic. The business logic is what your application is about, is what makes your app uh, be valuable. So uh, because of this, you have to separate the construction logic from the business logic. And this, if you don't do this, it's going to be your class is going to be hard to follow. It's going to be hard to read. And it's not going to make a lot of sense for other people that look at this class. So for, for this construction logic, uh, which is separate of the business logic, in dependency injection, there is a class which is actually responsible for this. So before we were talking about separation of concerns, the single responsibility principle. So the, the class in charge of doing all of this is going to be the dependency injection container in DI. So this is what it's going to be uh, in the future, or well, uh, as we will see later, a component in Hilt. It's going to handle the logic of how to create different classes uh, for you in your application. Um, so if you want to see a little bit of more like recap about dependency injection and why you might need it, the, uh, we gave a talk, uh, Daniel Santiago and I gave a talk at Android Developer Summit to 2019. Uh, the talk is called Dependency Injection on Android. And there uh, it was uh, last year, like we talked a little bit why you need it and what's going to come in the future. And the future is today. <laughs> we were kind of uh, pre-announcing Hilt there. So basically, uh, what we recommend is that we recommend, Google recommends that you use dependency injection uh, principles in your application, since in your Android app, since it has uh, great benefits. And, and we recommend you as well to use a dependency injection library, because this library is going to um, avoid you all to create all the boilerplate or basically creating that um, construction logic yourself. So basically, a library is going to create that boilerplate for you. It's going to create all that boilerplate code, uh, and it's going to do it for you so that it's less work for you. But then dependency injection is quite hard in Android. And this is because that the framework classes are instantiated by the uh, Android SDK, it's instantiated by the framework. If you think about an activity or a service, you don't have access to the constructor of an activity. Like you have to, you know, uh, call start activity from a context or things like that. That you, you cannot uh, own it. You don't own it. It's something that the framework does for you. And this got better recently. Uh, so there, there were some factories added on API 28, for example, the fragment factories. But it's not realistic to have a minimum uh, SDK version 28 in your application. So that's why we recommend something uh, like Dagger or Hilt. So um, in that talk, uh, was last year, we recommended you to use Dagger. Obviously, that recommendation uh, has changed, and now we recommend Hilt. Uh, but what about Dagger? Dagger, uh, it was recommended, but we wanted a better solution because it is hard to configure, and it is there are multiple ways to do the same thing. So you might be, if you're familiar with Dagger, you know that you can use Dagger basically however you want. Like you can do the same thing in a lot of ways. And because this was confusing for the community, 49% um, of developers of you asked for a better dependency injection solution. So we uh, ran some surveys uh, along the, like pretty much every year. Uh, and so one of the top requested features was having a better uh, DI solution for Android. 
And so we asked you, what do you want uh, for this solution? And you said, I want it to be opinionated. And basically with opinionated, it's like, I want the library to make decisions for me so that it's easier to use. So, and, and that, that's what we will see later, that Hilt makes some decisions for you. And that's why it is easier to use than Dagger. And we want it to be easy to set up. Uh, we know that Dagger, for example, was uh, complicated to set up. There was a little bit of boilerplate involved because Dagger is not made for Android apps. It's just a like a Java DI solution in general. So it was uh, kind of um, a boilerplate involved to make it work in Android. And also, like you wanted to focus on what's important and the important bits in, in, in dependency injection are obviously the dependencies. And that's why uh, Hilt got born. Uh, that, that was mainly the reasons why we created Hilt. And so Hilt is a library uh, on top of Dagger. So it gets all the benefits of, of Dagger. And it's an effort between the Android X team and Dagger and the Dagger team. And basically, it's going to standardize how to do dependency injection in Android. And, and since I said, because it's built on top of Dagger, you will see that it's based on annotations. So you are going to use annotations to tell Hilt how to do things. We will see later. And also, the, one of the good things is that it has tooling support. So I don't know if you use the latest version of Android Studio, but uh, Android Studio 4.1 and obviously 4.2 comes with extensions for, well, not extension, but it comes with, um, with new gutter icons for for DI, for Dagger specifically. So for example, if you are uh, getting something as a dependency, with one click in the, the, in the editor, you know where that dependency is coming from, and that's pretty handy. And also, it comes with Android X extensions. Uh, we launched it uh, last year, uh, this year, sorry, in June, and it comes with support for view model and work manager, but we, we intend to, to improve uh, the, the coverage there with other Jetpack libraries. Cool, so let's let's talk about how you, you can use Hilt in your app. So we are gonna uh, use the, the basically the, the sample that we've been using until now, the music player. So basically, uh, if you want to tell Hilt how to create uh, an object, for example, uh, I want Hilt to know how to create a music player. So if you have access to the constructor of the class, for example, in, in our case, if you just need to, uh, to annotate this constructor with the inject annotation. And basically, this is going to tell Hilt how to create the, this object. Uh, and the, the parameters of the constructor are, are going to be the dependencies of this class. So right now, we, uh, if, if you see the presentation, music player doesn't take any dependencies. And because it doesn't take any dependencies, a Hilt can obviously create it because it doesn't depend on anything. And so, so that's uh, the, the at inject annotation to tell Hilt how to create instances of different types. And then we have uh, another annotation, which is at Hilt Android app. And basically, this annotation is going to annotate the application class. And this just tells uh, Hilt and tells uh, the, the annotation processor that, hey, um, this application is going to use Hilt. And we will see later as well that this is also going to add a dependency injection container to the application class. So that the dependency injection container is going to you know, uh, have uh, um, the logic to how to create uh, objects or instances at this application level. And then if you want to use a uh, Hilt in your activity, for example, we, we said before that you don't have access to how to uh, construct an activity. You don't have access to the constructor. Therefore, you have another annotation called at Android entry point. And with Android entry point, basically you are, you are telling Hilt, hey, this activity um, is gonna be uh, is gonna be using injection. It's gonna be using it's gonna be using dependency injection, and this is gonna add another dependency injection container uh, to this activity. But also, it's gonna allow you to to use um, to uh, grab dependencies from Hilt. And so, if you, for example, a variable in your app in your activity, you mark it with at inject, uh, as we can see in, in the screen, it means that it's gonna be injected by Hilt. 
you don't have access to the, to the constructor, but then in this way you are saying, hey, please, when the activity is created, please inject music player uh, here in this activity. And then in the onCreate method, like as, as any other uh, thing, or as, a, as any other logic that you might have, you can call the music player and do whatever you want. Cool, so we've seen that, that we had uh, three annotations, a uh, Hilt Android app for the application class, Android entry point to annotate the Android framework classes, and then at inject to tell Hilt how to build something. And so now uh, let's make it more difficult. So now let's say that music player depends on the music database. And so now what we do is add this music database as a parameter in the constructor of, of the music player. So now, uh, in order for Hilt to create a music player, it needs to know how to create a music database because it's a dependency that uh, the music player has. And so how can we tell Hilt uh, to, to create a music database? So if we had access to the music database constructor, we could use the at inject annotation uh, as we've done with the music player. However, this music, music database might come from other places. So imagine that we have a database coming from Room, from the Jetpack library. And so with Room, you don't have access to the constructor either. You, you have a builder to create a class. And so you cannot use the at inject annotation because you don't have access to it. So for that, you have to use modules. And, and a module is just a class annotated with um, the at module annotation. And basically, uh, there is also another annotation, uh, which is called installing. And basically here, you're saying, hey, uh, a module, I want this module. Basically, a module is going to contain a class, it's going to contain methods. And those methods are going to uh, tell Hilt how to create different instances. And basically, you can think of this as a recipe, as a recipe list, right? It's saying, hey, this uh, recipe is for building this type, and this other recipe is to, for building like this other type. And so you basically, this information, which uh, we will see in a second with the database, this, um, this uh, uh, information, I want you to to put it in the application component or in the application level dependency injection container. And so for example, here I was seeing, we can see in the presentation that the, now we can create a method um, annotated with at provides that basically contains a bunch of code that is gonna tell Hilt how to create a database, a music database. So whenever Hilt needs to know how to create a database, it's gonna come here because the recipe, the information is here and it's going to run this piece of code in order to provide a, the dependency, in order to provide the music database. Cool. And so now we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about components, about the dependency injection container, because that, uh, we've been talking a, a, a little bit about this, and I want you to you know, be sure about what it is. So a Hilt component, for example, we've, we've seen application component, you can think of it as a dependency injection container. And as I was saying before, this container is going to handle the logic of how to build things. So for example, for the music database, it has a dependency uh, in, in the, uh, for the music player, it has a dependency in the database. And so there is a little bit of logic there that in order to create one object, I need to create an instance of another object. And, and so the component is going to have that logic. And if you uh, look at it and how it works under the hood, basically this is just a bunch of factories, which is following the, the factory pattern. So it's going to have a factory for its type that it knows how to create instances of. So for example, it's going to have a factory to create a music database, and it's going to have another factory uh, to create a music player. And then it's going to connect those factories together whenever it has to create something. And obviously, uh, this is the simplified version of it. Like Hilt uh, and Dagger can optimize this and use factories whenever they need it. And also, it's going to have like other logic, for example, as we will see later, like what if I want to reuse this instance, for example, with scoping, etc. So um, with Hilt, we said before that Hilt is opinionated. And it's opinionated because it comes 
with uh, components, with dependency injection containers for you. It comes with an application component, with an activity retained component that survives configuration changes. It comes with an activity component and also with a fragment component. And it means that it is going to have a dependency injection container uh, according to that um, framework class. So the application component is going to follow the, the life cycle of the application class and the same for the activity. So the activity component is going to follow the dependency injection container assigned to an activity. It's going to follow the life cycle of that particular uh, activity. And, and that's nice. And apart from that, we also have support for services and for views. And so, for example, let's say that we are in an application and we have our uh, application uh, dependency injection container. And now let's say that we are in an activity and then we move uh, to another activity. These two activities that are created, uh, both of them are, are going to have a different instance of the activity component. And so an activity uh, a container or the activity component for one activity is going to be created and destroyed and the same for the other one but they are not going to be shared they are going to be different and so for example if if the activity uh, a for example wants to access the music database and activity b as well um, because we haven't told um, uh, healed anything uh, this music database is going to be different um, we said before that uh, we wanted the music database information to be available at the application level. We installed that recipe, that information in the application component. Therefore, uh, whenever uh, the different activities need to provide uh, needs, uh, the music database as a dependency, that block of code that we had before, it's going to be executed again. And so the activities, they are going to receive different instances of the music database. But for something like a database, we might want to uh, have a single instance. We might have to reuse. We might want to reuse the same instance every time because you know it might have you know shared connections or there might be some synchronization going on. Uh, so we want to share it. And how can we tell it to Hill? With Hill, basically, you can tell that we you want to reuse the same instance, or in saying in other words, you want to scope an instance or, or, or a type to a component, you do the same with annotations. And so, for example, for the application component, uh, you, you, want, you want to use or you have to use the at singleton annotation. And basically, you annotate a, a class or, the constructor, or, or the, the constructor of a class, or if you are in a module, the, 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 the function that knows how to, uh, tells Hilt how to provide something, you annotate it with this scoping annotation and basically, Next time that, for example, here that the uh, music database is required in multiple places, the same instance is going to be provided. And so now you don't have to worry about, you know, losing shared connections, etc. And I said that there are different scoping annotations and every component has a different annotation for it. So, for example, for if you want to scope something to the activity component, you can use the at activity scoped annotation. That's basically it's going to scope a type uh, to that uh, component. Cool. So we've seen now that, uh, that we have a uh, a lot of already built-in components for different framework classes. So we have the activity component, service component, in case we, you want to uh, get something or get something injected into a service. But this, because if this is opinionated, there are a limited amount of components. So what if you want to have Hilt available somewhere else? Or, or mainly, what, what, what I mean here is that, what if you want to get Hilt dependencies or dependencies created by Hilt in other parts of your code that is not directly supported by Hilt? And that's where the entry points come in. So basically, you can use an entry point to access the dependency graph. To, to access that dependency injection co container. And, and so, for example, imagine that we have a content provider in our app because we have to export a playlist or whatever. A content provider is not uh, directly supported by Hilt. And this is because the, the life cycle of, of the content provider is a bit weird. And sometimes the onCreate method of the content provider can be called before the application onCreate method uh, call. So uh, it's not direct, directly supported because of that. But what if we wanted to get the same instance of the music database in our content provider? 
So basically we want to gather you know, that music database from the application component. And for this, we have to use entry points. And so an entry point is just an interface annotated with at Android entry point and at installing as we were doing with the modules. And basically here at installing takes in where do we want to grab that information from? And so um, we actually, the, the types that we want to grab from the from the, uh, the entry point is basically in the methods of the interface. So for example, in the interface, we, have, we can have a method called get music database uh, of type music database. And basically, Hilt is gonna generate that code for us. And at runtime, for example, in the query method, we might have some logic using uh, uh, entry point accessors that basically is a static method where you pass in, uh, the, for example, for the application uh, component, you pass in the context or the application context, um, the name of the interface, uh, and that's it. And with that, uh, uh, Hilt is going to pre-populate something for you. It's going to generate code for you so that when you call entry point dot get music database, you are going to get that dependency uh, available in Hilt. And with this, I think it's the end of part one, and I want to uh, <laughs> answer your questions. So if you have questions or like something in chat or like some questions you might have offline, happy to answer. I cannot hear you. Okay, you know? already we have a few questions. Awesome. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the first, the most interesting question uh, for me too, it's what's about uh, under the hood? Uh, what will be generated? Subcomponents or, uh, depend or dependent components? Yeah, so it uses subcomponents. Uh, and that's because um, with this, it's easier to create com with subcomponents if, for example, you might say, like what I didn't mention before is that when you are in, in a component below in the hierarchy, you have access to the information above uh, in the components of the hierarchy. So, for example, if music database is available in the application component, it is also going to be available in the activity component, for example. And that, that logic is very uh, easy to do with subcomponents because subcomponents are going to flow down those dependencies available in the parent. And so it, it needs to use subcomponents, and that's what it uses under the hood. Because if you are, you are familiar with Dagger, and Dagger, you can use component dependencies or dependent components, but then you have to expose which types uh, are needed by other components, and then it makes everything uh, mu much more difficult. That's why we are using subcomponents. But uh, if all components uh, are generated, uh, you can uh, provide this uh, you can specify this dependency in uh, parent uh, uh, interfaces of components and share them because uh, this question is important because uh, in uh, modularization gradual modularization of projects uh, we use dependent components because subcomponents have some limitation and it's official recommendation from Google to use uh, dependent components in a multimodal application and it generates a less code because subcomponents mm -hmm. uh, uh, will be uh, inner classes class inside class yeah. and this will be a very uh, big uh, very big class very one big uh, generated code and it will be hard to read yeah and that's totally true and that's the recommendation we we have for for, for Dagger, but the, like Hilt was originally made with subcomponents because it was technically easier to do. And like with, with dependent components, it would have been much more difficult for the, for the library engineers to actually become with Hilt work, working with dependent components. And, and so what you are saying, it's especially important for uh, dynamic feature modules because it is the recommendation uh, for dynamic feature modules to use dependent components because otherwise like the, the way modules depend on each other is inverted. So you don't have access to the parent component in a dynamic feature module. And, and so that's why there are some cases where Hilt 
uh, in this case, uh, falls short. Uh, and, and the recommendation if you want to use Hilt in, in dynamic feature modules is actually use Hilt in your application, but then when you go to your dynamic feature module, you need to use Dagger at that point. Uh, so we have some guidance for this in, in the official documentation. Uh, read it. So basically what you do, it's grabbing a, uh, the dependencies that you need from the application component in an entry point, and from that point you create a, a Dagger component. So at that point you have to use plain Dagger for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's only for dynamic features, yes? Yeah. Or maybe so if some you, other cases. Yeah, if you use uh, submodules, like if you use Gridle modules as as regular Gridle modules, uh, you can use Hilt. Hilt works as any other uh, module. This is just for dynamic feature modules. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any plans to support uh, dynamic feature modules with Hilt? So th the problem with dynamic feature modules is is that it doesn't play nicely with annotation processors, and we are we are seeing the same problems with uh, other libraries. For example, with the Safe Arcs library uh, for nav the navigation library. Safe arcs don't work uh, with that either because of the same issue. But we are we are trying to see internally how how we can make it work, exposing some metadata, etc., uh, to make it work with dynamic feature modules as well. But at the uh, moment, it's not possible. Uh, Room doesn't have a good multimodal support tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's. Uh, uh, do you have any plans to improve uh, sc uh, scalability of? Uh, um, of uh, Dagger, Dagger, Dagger Hilt, and another libraries from architecture components. What, what, do, you, what do you mean with scalability? Uh, about uh, support multimodal project because uh, every big project right now hmm. uh, 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 they contains about uh, maybe 20, 30 at least, mo uh, at least models and yeah. uh, we have I know many projects that are bigger and have uh, more models and uh, architecture components is, um, uh, isn't a good solution for them because uh, developers need to make some magic and uh, find out mm -hmm. some tricks to scale that uh, libraries in multimodal. Yeah, definitely. This is something that we are seeing the community going uh, towards, like, you know, multimodal solutions are like, very popular these days. And definitely uh, we are aware of that and we are trying to make it better. Okay. Uh, and uh, one more question. Uh, True. Um, yeah, we need to find something interesting. Um, mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, uh, it's a very interesting question, uh, uh, we can uh, make a short talk about that. What's the purpose of using different models instead of only one? Uh, I think that question that uh, don't, doesn't need answer. Yeah, I mean, that that's a way to iterate faster and, you know, uh, basically scale your app to you know application uh, to other teams and like yeah, basically iterate faster and then instead of as we were saying like dependencies like separation of concerns like you can extrapolate that and put it in modules like each module having a separate concern uh, as a part of the rest of the app it's basically kind of the same idea but with modules okay uh, I think we need to continue and sure. after that, I have uh, a long list of my own questions, and <laughs> they were they are very interesting. Nice. Uh, I, then I'll try to be quick. Looking forward to those questions. Cool. So we were talking about the uh, the Hilt and why we might need Hilt, and also we said before that uh, that Hilt was integrated with uh, Android X. Uh, it has it comes with Android X extensions for Jetpack libraries. And so we are going to see that it works perfectly with um, 
with uh, view model and work manager. So we've seen that Hilt works great with the framework classes, with a single tone, uh, sorry, with uh, application, with activity, with fragment. But now, like, how does it play with other libraries? So we are going to see, for example, view model. So we said, like, we shipped with view model and work manager support, but we are going to see uh, why view model. So view model, uh, again, like, you don't create. Uh, that object. So when you uh, want to instantiate a view model, you have access to the constructor, but then you have to use the framework in order for that view model to survive configuration changes. So you need a view model factory, and then you have to call like view model providers in order to, to grab uh, an instance of the view model from the view level. So with Hilt, uh, instead of uh, creating madness and a lot of code with um, providers, etc. you just need one single annotation, which is at view model inject. So basically, at view model inject is going to make Hilt create all that logic for you. It's going to create the provider and it's going to pass the dependencies that it might need. And it comes with dependencies, for example, uh, that are needed at runtime. So for example, if you want to support a process death, uh, and uh, activity uh, recreation and all that, uh, you might want to use the, the saved state handle. And that uh, you don't own that dependency because this is something that the system or the framework creates for you. And But that's available in Hilt, in Hilt as well. So if you mark that dependency, the saved state handle dependencies, dependency with at assisted, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. It will be populated at the right, uh, at the right time for you. And then you can also have your view model might have other dependencies, for example, your music database dependency. And you don't need to do to annotate it with anything. It's just a regular dependencies that a regular dependencies that you might have as many others. And that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Just one single annotation at view model inject. And that's it. And you can use your view model in, in those places where Hilt is used. For example, if you use it in uh, an activity, for example, an activity that uses at Android entry point, which is annotated with at Android entry point, then you can use your view model as you would regularly do in your app. For example, you can use uh, play, uh, ball view model, uh, play view model, by view models. And if you use the KDX extension, the by view models, then there you go. You have access to the view model and you can do whatever you want. It's that easy. That's why it's, so inter it's integrated that easily with, uh, with, uh, with um, Android X extensions. And these extensions come in a different artifact. So they have their own uh, annotation processor and their own library. So if you want to use view model inject or worker inject, then you can do it. Cool, let's talk a little bit about testing. So dependency injection uh, claimed before that it's supposed to make testing easier. And how, how can Hilt simplify your testing uh, story? So if you don't use dependency injection, or well, actually better said, if you don't use Hilt, basically what you have to do is in order to create in your test, in order to create your music uh, player, you need to create uh, your your database, right? Because that, that's the dependency of the music player. And, and because of that now, uh, because you are in a test, you don't want to use a real database. You, you might want to use an in-memory database builder. And basically, you just create that database in your test, you pass it to the music player, and now you can test it because you created an instance of the, of the music player to test. And the problem here is that basically now, what we are doing is that we are exercising, ex exercising the dependency graph ourselves manually in tests. So now we are okay because music player only has one dependency. But imagine if music player had 20 dependencies and maybe those dependencies that they might have might have another transitive dependencies, might have, you know, another 20 transitive dependencies. Basically, you have to create everything on your own again by hand in your test. And that's problematic. And, and, and so at some point, if you want to cut that graph, that dependency graph, you might start introducing mocks, fakes, but you know, they, they come with pros and cons. But what if you, you could use Hilt in your test? What if you could use Hilt to basically create all this construction logic that you'd have in your test for you? 
And basically you can do it. And, and so if you want to uh, your test to use Hilt, you have to annotate it with Hilt Android test. And that annotation, uh, it's gonna, you know, uh, create uh, everything, the components and all that. Uh, it's gonna make uh, Hilt aware of these uh, tests. And you create a rule and you, you use it uh, like this, it's Hilt Android rule. And that rule is gonna create the components and it's gonna manage the state of those components. And now you can call at inject as if you were in an activity or in another place. Like you can inject your music player into the test. That's easy. And then you have to call inject to populate that music player, to tell Hilt to populate that uh, field that you declared with, with at inject. And now in your, in your test, like you don't have to worry about that construction logic because you just can call a player.play and don't worry about anything else. But uh, this, this code, uh, I see this right now, it has a bug. And the, the bug is that right now we haven't told Hilt that this music player needs to use, needs, needs to use um, a memory database. Right now, Hilt only knows how to create uh, room databases with the music player. So how can we tell Hilt to forget about that information, to forget about that recipe, and then use the in-memory database instead? And so we can basically use this other annotation, which is called uninstalled modules. Uh, 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 uninstalled modules is going to annotate the class, the test class as well, and you tell Hilt what information you want him to, to forget. So in this case, we are forgetting information in data module, which contained the data, the music database. And now, because we don't have that information, we have to tell this test what to do with the music database. And basically, we can create uh, another module inside the test. And if we do it inside the test, then uh, it is going to use this dependency or, or this information for this test. If you take this module out to, a, to, the, to another package, it's going to be applied to all the different uh, tests in your, in your module. So here, basically, we are creating a test module, and then that we say, okay, whenever you want to, uh, whenever you have to provide a music database, use the in-memory database, and that's it. And basically, uh, there is more information. I'm gonna skip quickly through it. There is more information about testing in the documentation, but you have to uh, set up a test runner uh, a little bit, and you have more annotations uh, for testing, which makes uh, makes uh, testing easier. So if you're interested. Uh, go to the documentation and everything is there. So, and the last thing uh, we want to talk about is migration. So, uh, we recommended you to use Dagger last year, but uh, what happens now if you are using Dagger or you are using uh, Dagger Android in your app? So, basically, uh, you can uh, integrate Hilt in your app as you wish because Hilt uh, can work together with Dagger and Dagger Android. And so, you can have both of them at the same time in your project. And we have uh, also migra migra migration APIs to, to ease that migration to make it easier. And here you have a link to the migration guide. So basically it's in the dagger.dev uh, uh, website and you have there the migration guide um, uh, that explains perfectly how to you know, incrementally uh, migrate to your application to use Hilt. Cool, so what's next? So we something that we are investing on at the moment, uh, it's that we want to make Hilt available outside Android Gradle modules. You, you've seen right now that Hilt, it's tightly uh, coupled with the Android framework classes. So we have an activity component, we have an application component, and because of that, we ship it as saying AAR, it's not a jar. So you cannot use Hilt in Java only or Kotlin only modules. And this is the, uh, something that the team is aware of and we are uh, planning to fix. Another improvement that we want to make to Hilt, uh, and in this case, both to Hilt and Dagger, because as uh, Hilt is made on top of Dagger, we are investing both and we are improving both Dagger and Hilt. And something we are investing is in, a, in, a, in assisted injection. And assisted, uh, assisted injection is for those parameters that you don't know at compile time. It's some parameters that it might happen at runtime. For example, if you know if your view model needs some sort of ID that comes from the view, that, that happens at runtime. And with assisted injection, you can do that. And also more Android X integrations. For example, like the we are trying to see how to integrate the navigation library or things like that. 
Cool. So please give us feedback. Give uh, Hilt a try. Uh, we have uh, Hilt Android documentation in developers.android.com, but also more technical documentation in, in dagger.dev. And the, the repo is the same as the, the Dagger repo. And there you can file bugs or feature requests if you want to. But also we have, if in case you want to learn more about Hilt, we have a couple of code labs. So we have to, a code lab uh, called using Hilt in your Android app, which basically adds Hilt to an existing application uh, that uses a service locator. And then we have another code lab that is called migrating your Dagger app to Hilt. Uh, it's obvious what it does. And uh, so after this, uh, we also have some blog posts uh, about how to add custom components to the Hilt hierarchy, how we migrated the Google I.O. app to Hilt, and how to do scoping in Android and Hilt. Because the scoping is a, it's a difficult topic, and here I go more in detail about how you can do it and what it means for your application. And that's it. Uh, I'm so looking forward to answering your questions again, and I know that Kirill has a lot of them. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. And obviously, if you have any other question, like whenever you listen to this, might not, you might not be listening it now live. But if you have questions in the future, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, at Manuel, V-I-C-N-T. And there you can reach out to me, ask anything you want. Uh, I will be very happy to answer that. Okay, thank you for the talk. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, and you can ask questions in comments for that video on YouTube and I will send them to Manuel. It's not problem. And uh, yes, please. yeah, uh, let's start. Uh, the most interesting question is what about stable release? Uh, what, mm -hmm. uh, what is, uh, what are blocking it right now? Yeah. So th there, there are a few things uh, that we want to, um, we want to add to the stable release, uh, for example, the making it available outside uh, uh, outside Android Gradle modules. That's something that we are currently working on, and also assi assisted injection. So we are trying those two things. We want to make it for for the in, in the library before it reaches stable. And basically, like we are trying to work uh, as much as we, we can. We are trying to make it as soon as possible because this is something like having uh, the, the library stable. We know that is very important uh, for the adoption. Because some people say, hey, it's in alpha. Uh, I don't know if I should add it to my application because, you know, my manager or my team doesn't want it because this is still iterating. Let's say like it's really it's very ready to be used in production. Actually, we are using it in in our Google internal apps. They are using Hilt. Uh, we migrated to open source apps to Hilt. So I think it was yesterday. Like uh, or actually, there is a, a PR app for having Hilt in Sunflower, uh, which was recently added to Sunflower. But also we have the Google I/O app. Uh, we have a TV from Chris Baines as well using Hilt. So it, it's working fine. Um, and I, I would recommend people to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think this, that, was, that was a good answer. Uh, nothing <laughs> to add. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, assisted, uh, assisted injection will be part of uh, core dagger. Yeah. Yeah. Both dagger and Hilt. Yeah, uh, let's go uh, to another interesting section. It's about performance. Uh, the first, uh, the first, the main language of the Android development is Kotlin, and mm -hmm. we need to use Cupt uh, to work with annotation processing. Cupt uh, isn't so fast, and its problem uh, many developers suffer from its speed and uh, already made uh, many jokes about that mm -hmm. and uh, what about Hilt because Hilt built on top of Dagger uh, what about overhead in, in uh, compile time yeah uh, Capt is obviously the major bottleneck that, that we have right now uh, at build time um, so Hilt on top of Dagger doesn't add a lot of extra extra time because basically Hilt is just a thin layer uh, on top of Dagger. But basically Hilt is going to generate code that Dagger is going to pick up. And that's why it's built on top of Dagger. 
And the amount of code that it generates is not that much. So you, if you use Dagger and you you add Hilt, you are gonna see you are not gonna see that much difference. The problem comes with Capt, of course, for Kotlin projects because it's obviously uh, quite slow and it's not up to standard that we want, you know, apps to be. And so the the, the Dagger team is looking how to use ksp uh, in dagger ksp is a new initiative it's a new uh, library which is done for to do like compiler uh, kotlin compiler plugins that is basically like you know uh, another layer another abstraction on top of the kotlin uh, plugin uh, compiler thingy and and so the team is investing on seeing how we could use ksp which is it means like kotlin symbol processing instead of uh, the, the traditional uh, annotation processor. But this is an ongoing uh, project. This is an ongoing effort that we don't know uh, when that would come. Mm -hmm. uh, for our listeners, uh, Kotlin Simple Processing, it, um, it's like replacing of annotation processing based uh, on plugins for Kotlin compilers. Uh, this will be edited in Kotlin, oh, in, Kotlin in Android Studio 4.2. Uh, but it will be experimental and um, as I uh, saw um, during uh, event uh, at June uh, about improving Glide annotation processing performance, uh, it was uh, improved uh, about 30% uh, speed improvement. Yeah, that, that's and that was great. Yeah, and that was great. Uh, one, yeah. one of the, if you want to know more about this, one of one of the problems that we are having is that right now we are generating Java code and we are using Java Poet or like very, something very similar, and so now what we have to do is trying to have the same uh, syntax between KSP that is able to be able to write Java code under the hood, just to make uh, Hilt compatible with both Java and Kotlin at the same time, and so that's one one of the things that we have to do before uh, using uh, KSP in Hilt. Yeah, yeah, because problem of CAPT is that uh, Java notation processing uh, require, requires uh, Java code. Kotlin uh, couldn't be uh, processed by uh, Java notation processing and that's why CAPT uh, generate Java stops uh, and uh, push them to annotation processor and after it only after after that uh, step, uh, annotation processor only can run and uh, process some code. Uh, uh, KSP uh, will eliminate that steps, and after Kotlin code uh, will generate uh, Kotlin, uh, Java bytecode uh, without any intermediate step steps, and uh, that is improvement. <laughs> Uh, okay, the second question is about Gradle plugin. Why do you need Gradle plugin for Hilt? Uh, how I understand, uh, right now you modify uh, generated uh, bytecode. Yeah, so the, the, the Gradle plugin is optional. And in the, if you go to the technical documentation, you can see how you can avoid it. So basically, the Gradle plugin, what it does is that um, it's for the at Android entry point annotation. So you've seen that with at Android entry point, you don't have to do anything else. That's what the uh, Android Gradle plugin does. If you remove the plugin, basically what Hilt does, it's that Hilt is going to create a super class that, that your class, for example, let's say that we are in music activity. So Hilt is going to create a Hilt music activity. And the Gradle plugin, what it's going to do is that uh, with bytecode transformation, it's going to transform your at Android entry point and it's going to make it extend that class that Hilt generates. So if you don't use uh, the Gradle plugin, you will have to extend that uh, generated class uh, manually. And all that is in the documentation in case you are curious and in case you don't want to use that Gradle plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, does the Gradle plugin uh, edit some extra time to compile step? No, it shouldn't. It, it's pretty fast. Okay, that's great. Um, what about incremental builds? It, it works uh, right now. It works with incremental builds. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, uh, we have few questions from uh, the chat. Uh, it's about uh, do, um, 
do we have any sense to migrate from coding, coin, dependency injection, service locator uh, uh, to Hilt? That that's up to up to you actually. That's up to the the team uh, that you are working with. Um, I mean, it's a, it's another coding or or coin. It's it's another very valid solution. I mean, Google we we recommend you to use something, but obviously you can do whatever you want. Basically, it's your application. You you rule and you do what you want. Um, but but of course, like it it depends on 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 your project and what you want to do with it. Uh, so if, if you are you know working with coding or with, with coding and it works, then then it's fine. But then like you know if someone else comes to contribute to your project, that means that that other person needs to be familiar with the library and all that. And so with Hilt, basically what we want to have is a standard way to do dependency injection, so that if you move between projects, like you know everything is pretty much the same. You you don't have to worry about learning a new technology or anything like that. But about migrating, it really depends on, on you and your team. If you see it beneficial because it fits your use case, then do it. If not, uh, it's totally optional. Okay, uh, I very like coin, uh, but uh, uh, right now I think mobile dagger hilt uh, because uh, uh, two uh, main things was changed, why it changed for me. The first one is uh, simplifying uh, working with uh, architecture components, view models, uh, and uh, less boilerplate code with uh, components and models. And mm -hmm. the second one, uh, it's amazing navigation in Android Studio between dependency and models. And mm -hmm. I don't know how you cannot use it because this is uh, integration. Uh, I think it's killer feature of Dagger in Android. Yeah, that, that was what we were, uh, what I was mentioning before about the tooling support. Like that one click that takes you to the right dependency, it's it's a really big win. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question from me. Uh, it's about, uh, did you make uh, some special APIs or private APIs in Dagger uh, to, for, for special for Hilt? No, no. Uh, so we like, we Hilt uses a dagger as you could use it. Like you could create Hilt on your own. Like you could create an annotation processor which is gonna contribute to dagger. Uh, there is nothing, nothing hidden that we access. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's start with the questions uh, from the audience. Um, mm, yeah. It's a good question. Uh, why is there is no fragment retained component and activity retained? As I understood, fragment component and activity component uh, will be uh, destroyed uh, when on destroyed uh, will be yeah. called. Yeah, that's fine. This is because <laughs> this is a very complicated question uh, and it's actually uh, a little bit complicated to understand as well because what happens here is that we have a diamond issue that we call it. So imagine for example, right? So we have a um, fragment component and fragment component, let's put it here um, and see myself in the other way. So we have a fragment component here that extends from activity component. An activity component extends from uh, activity retained component. If we wanted to make a fragment retained component, that means that the, the fragment retained component needs to extend uh, as well from activity component and activity retained component. And basically there is a cycle there that we cannot avoid. And so we are considering it. Uh, we, we need to consider it as well because uh, in order to support uh, fragment factories, we need this uh, fragment retained component. Um, um, and basically, there are a few options. The options are basically because it creates like a diamond between the different components is cutting one link. And the problem is which link you, do you cut? If you have a fragment retained component, do you make it extend from only the activity retained component or activity component? Because right now, uh, a dagger component cannot have multiple parents. And that's the main problem with, with the solution. If, if Dagger supported multiple parents in components, we could do it, but at the moment it doesn't. 
So we, we are thinking about how to solve it, but we, we know that that's something that the community is asking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more interesting question about Anvil. Uh, 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 the same library uh, from Square uh, for simplify working with Dagger. Uh, uh, as I saw, it do the same things, many same things. Uh, do you know about difference between Hilt and Anvil? Yeah, so Hilt is basically, you can think of, of Hilt in, in two different parts. So the first part is what we call auto-discoverability of modules. And it's what we said before with uh, the at module at installing application component. Basically, you create a module and that module is going to be uh, picked up at the right time uh, by Dagger or by Hilt. But then we have two, uh, like another thing, another benefit, which is the at Android entry point, which means that you don't have to create uh, the components yourself and you are gonna, like your fring- your Android framework classes are gonna be injected automatically. So you can think of um, Ambil as only the first part. So um, Ambil offers this auto discoverability of modules where you can say, I want this module to be used by this component. But then that, that's what it does. That's what the other library does. But it, it doesn't do what Hilt does, which is mainly um, um, injecting automatically for you in your Android framework classes. And something that the team is also considering is splitting these two different benefits of Hilt into two different artifacts. As in, like, if you only wanted to use one part, you can use it, or if you wanted to use the other part, you can use it. Right now, they are both functionalities together, but we could separate it out. Mm-hmm. I hope the, the answer is clear. Yeah. Uh, the next question consists from two parts. Uh, the first part, uh, it's, uh, is, it, uh, is Hilt applicable to a uh, big size modularized project and uh, or it's only a replacement for Dagger Android? So it, it could be used, uh, as we were saying before, like you could use uh, Hilt and Dagger together. And, and like, for example, like our Android apps at Google, they are pretty big and, and, and they use Hilt. Uh, and so I assume like you won't see uh, anything. Uh, it's supposed to work fine with uh, big applications because Dagger and Hilt are built to scale. And then regarding Dagger Android, uh, yeah, like um, what, what is nice about Dagger Android and Hilt is that you can replace Dagger Android very easily uh, with Hilt because the mapping between components are very similar. And so replacing one to another and doing that m- migration is quite straightforward. Okay, um, yeah, um, let's, uh, let's, I, I want to ask some questions from my side. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, you showed um, injection uh, in Vmodel, simplified. Uh, uh, what about injection in Fragment? Because uh, from, uh, fr- uh, we already have Fragment factory and can inject in Fragment constructors uh, do you have plans or maybe already implemented that feature? Uh, it is not implemented yet. It, it is it is pretty much having the, the problem that I was mentioning before about the diamond issue. And one of the, in addition to that, one of the problems is that the, the application factory is not used um, um, before the on-create. Uh, so, so you have to use it before. And that means that if you use the, the fragment factory, you don't have the instance of the fragment available for you. So one of the things that Hilt also gives you is that uh, in your components, for example, if you're in the activity component, you have access to the activity context and you have access to the activity itself. So one of the problems with the fragment factory that we are having at the moment is that if we allow the fragment factory, then uh, the fragment binding or the f- fragment information is not available in the factory, but it is available outside the factory. And, and that's going to be very confusing. So we are, gonna, we are seeing or we are investigating what's the best way to integrate the fragment factory, a fragment factory within Hilt, just to not make it very confusing. We don't want to have edge cases and we want to make it uh, as robust as possible. But that's something that we are considering as well.
I have one pain in Kotlin and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, this is a problem of Dagger and uh, it's late in it. <laughs> I don't like it uh, because uh, I remember that uh, uh, it was appeared uh, um, uh, maybe in one of better first first stable version of Kotlin in betas because many people complain about uh, with inject they need to use all, always use nullable uh, nullable types and that was a problem uh, but right now late units uh, often use only uh, with injecting good project but many cases when uh, late init uh, use everywhere and, uh, and yeah. many null pointer exceptions do you have any plans uh, to think about how to uh, remove uh, late init and inject annotation yeah it, it is true that we like make a heavy use of, of late uh, late in it. it is actually necessary in Kotlin. Um, I don't think there is a, a feature request in place. I don't know. But if the community thinks uh, that this is something that should go away, I really like encourage you to file a feature request. And probably like instead of having the at inject late, late in it, like you could have something like any other libraries, like having the, the property delegates, you could use like by inject or something like that. So uh, I invite you to create a feature request. Uh, let's talk with the team and say if and see if they are actually okay with that and if they want to implement it. Oh, sounds great. Uh, okay, the next one. Um it's about uh, declaration of dependencies. Mm -hmm. uh, now for declare dependency, we always need to define a class or object in Kotlin, uh, annotate it with module and uh, make, in, make uh, many provides or binds mm -hmm. functions. Uh, yes, and this is not so good because uh, for me, uh, it will be great if we can annotate uh, file uh, in Kotlin, file uh, annotate with module and put top level functions and annotate with provides or binds. Uh, is it possible with Hilt or maybe will be possible? Uh, th that, that would be an improvement to make to Dagger. And actually, I think it's a great idea. Um, again, like uh, file feature requests. I think all of this is a, a great ideas that the team should definitely consider. So just to give some context, uh, so Dagger, it's been mainly a Java library for a long time. And, and so the, the old maintainers of Dagger uh, moved to a different project and now new people are contributing to it. Uh, and you could see like now, like if you see the, the commit history, there are more, more people involved. And we definitely want Dagger to play better with Kotlin because as I said, traditionally it's been a Java library, but we want to have those like little things, little nice things with, with Kotlin. And I, I really recommend creating those file requests, uh, feature requests, to, to actually make those improvements. Because I assume they are possible. It's just, fine. It's just a, thing, like, uh, a thing to find the right priority for them. Uh, do you know how many developers use Dagger outside of Android development? Uh, difficult to say. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. And the next one, uh, improvement. I, th I, uh, I think that I know answer, but uh, I will ask uh, the question uh, about simplifying binding. Uh, because right now, to uh, if I have one uh, class, I have uh, interface that class uh, implements, uh, I need uh, to make uh, two uh, functions, method of functions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one with provide and one with uh, bind. Or maybe I can uh, remove provide, annotate uh, everything on constructor and class, and uh, but I still need model with binds. Uh, maybe uh, it it can be simplified and uh, you can bind. Uh, you can uh, describe bind uh, on class on that class to simplify that situation. Yeah, I, I've seen your your proposal about having uh, one annotation to make everything, and I think it, it looks great. Uh, I think it could be like simplified. 
Uh, I will talk with the with the Hilt team to see if if they they would be up for something like that. But uh, as I was saying before, please file feature requests because the the team is very active. They are you know looking forward to improving the library. They want you to use Hilt and you, to try it out to to give this feedback back to the team because they they really want love that feedback and they want to make it possible. So do it. Okay, I already have some tasks for weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the next question from the audience. It's about effects of uh, Hilt uh, on multimodal projects, about uh, build time, because uh, we already uh, discussed that uh, it uh, Hilt generates uh, single uh, single mm -hmm. class with uh, many subclasses uh, because. Under the hood, uh, it uses uh, subcom subcomponents, and that's it's a problem because a community that uh, use Dagger uh, already uh, understood mm -hmm. understood few years ago that subcomponents is not uh, good. Yeah, I think this is very fair, and and actually, like I love the the honesty that we are showing and. I mean, I healed, as I said before, um, is opinionated. Uh, and it means that it's going to make some decisions for you. And probably those decisions don't really fit with your use case because you might have a project that consists of X, Y, and Z. So you might need something different. And the good thing is that Hilt and Dagger can coexist. And sometimes, like if Hilt doesn't work for your use case, like you can use Dagger in that case. And if if you have your particular app with this, uh, you know, setup, and you think that Hilt is gon not gonna add a lot to your application, and it's gonna be uh, the opposite, it's gonna uh, make it worse. Then don't 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 use Hilt in that case. Uh, we will try to make Hilt work better for those cases. And the, the, but I wanted to, to mention again, like Hilt works perfectly as well with, uh, let's say with component dependencies. The problem is that when, whenever you have this component dependency, you lose the Hilt benefits. Whenever you create a component dependency, basically you lose the at Android entry point feature. And then the, uh, I think the auto discoverability works a little bit, but not, not so much. What I mean with, what I mean uh, with this is that, um, for example, in the guidance that I was uh, telling you before about the dynamic feature modules, like you can still use component dependencies and Hilt at the same time. And in some parts you can use Hilt, and in some parts you can use component dependencies, everything working together pretty nicely. So it's up to what your, your team and your application requires. Uh, okay, uh, what about uh, best practices? Uh, for multimodal applications with uh, pure Dagger and Dagger Hilt, uh, um, are they different? Um, well, not really. I think that the best practices are, are pretty much the same. So I think what we were recommending so be, before, what we were recommending in the in the Dagger guide is that a module that might be you know a helper or that doesn't really need a component. Those need to expose modules. The same thing ab apply to, to Hilt. Uh, if you have a helper module, just expose uh, modules uh, installed in the right component. And then like the other, uh, the other best practice with components that we had in Dagger, like you, you don't have it in Hilt because in, in Hilt you don't create any component unless you create custom components. But the, the same best practices apply for both. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, very good question about supporting a uh, multimodal solution or maybe pure Kotlin solution for dependency injection uh, because uh, we moved in pure Kotlin uh, we will have Jetpack Compose uh, we have already two or three libraries in Jetpack uh, that uh, built on top of Kotlin and mm -hmm. use only it. Uh, yesterday was announced data store that built on Kotlin and Coroutines tool. And mm -hmm. uh, what's about dependency injection and uh, migrating from Dagger uh, or improved Dagger, maybe Dagger, Dagger version uh, 3.0? 
Yeah, uh, this is something something that we really have in mind. Um, this is something that um, I, I, I personally will start working on uh, probably this year. Is that how we we could add a heal support or a dependency injection support uh, to compose? Because I, I'm involved in, in in both projects, so I can I have a bit of advantage there. Um, but yeah, we, we are thinking about it. We we want to think, um, we have to think what's the best way to have proper dependency injection, a proper dependency injection solution in Compose. Because at the moment, the, the solutions that are possible are very, very like a service locator. Like in Compose, we have something like, uh, that we call an ambient, but an ambient is it's a service locator thingy. Uh, and so we, we, we have to see how to do proper DI with Compose. And obviously, we want Hill to be part of it. Okay. Uh, and one more question about uh, view models and assisted. Uh, you showed sample with assisted for safe state handle, uh, but mm -hmm. what about uh, another kind of parameters? If I have maybe ID string uh, of type string, and I need to uh, send it to my dependency before creation. Uh, is it now of uh, is assistant assistant injection uh, now uh, work works in Dagger? Yeah. So, so right now it's not integrated out of the box. Uh, so right now we don't have it. Uh, both uh, assisted injection within Hilt, and th this is something that we want to to have before stable. Um, but I, I have some code snippets uh, using assisted injection from from the this I think it's Square library or Jake Wharton library, uh, the existing assisted injection library. Yeah. I have it working with Hilt, and 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 I have some gist uh, in my Twitter. I have a couple of code snippets that use both, uh, either without. Uh, view model or with view model, so I have both solutions working, uh, and also the the sunflower migration to Hilt it uses assisted injection as well from Jake Wharton, so you can see it in action. Uh, basically, you just use assisted injection as you would do normally, and then you can play it. Uh, you can have it play in, play nicely with with Hilt. Uh, yeah, I use a solution uh, from Jake. Uh, it's uh, good, but uh, when you try to scale it, uh, I've uh, I found uh, a lot of uh, problems and limitations because library uh, isn't uh, finished and has and, some and it all, it and all, Yeah, and it only creates one module, right? Yeah, you cannot uh, have a multiple uh, multiply multiply uh, models uh, with mm -hmm. generated assisted injection in one Gradle module. And that is not good because we have a, le a lot of legacy multiply uh, dagger components in single mm -hmm. Gradle model. And uh, um, when I saw uh, assisted injection in Hilt, uh, I was really happy because uh, I think that this was already part of new dagger, but not. Uh, yeah, it, it is not there, but, uh, but actually your use case is something that we want to fix. We okay. know that we need something like that. Okay, uh, that's great. Um, maybe we can find some, some interesting questions from the audience. Dania, maybe you can help me and find something interesting. Uh, and right now I uh, have one more question. Uh, I, re I really like feature of uh, Dagger feature multi-binding. It's great mm -hmm. with uh, factories for solve uh, creation of multiply uh, sim uh, similar uh, object like fragments, uh, view models uh, for um, um, work manager. And uh, it's really cool, but uh, working with multi binding, it's, uh, it's really hard because you need, uh, Dagger is hard. But multi bind mm -hmm. uh, multi binding uh, hard hard. <laughs> it's it's a level it's, of lead of an, lead developer. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, and uh, do you f um, uh, do you some ideas how that uh, API can be simplified and uh, tell about its um, usage more 
and uh, share it with developers because many developers uh, don't know it at all. Uh, some part of developers uh, know about uh, about it, uh, tried, but it was so hard they stopped. Yeah, I mean, multi-binding is one of those features that it is it is very difficult to to master, uh, as, as you were saying. And basically, like a, a multi-binding, uh, it pretty much work as a like you could think of it as a. a, a People are gonna kill me, but you can you can think of of multi binding as a way to have a mini service locator within Dagger. So basically, a, a multi binding is gonna be a set of of objects that you could basically put uh, those types into it. So for example, like you said, like yeah, you used it in the past with view models. Basically, what you were doing was uh, having a, a multi-binding, basically it's it's a binding where you can have as many objects uh, as you want of, as, of the same type uh, in that uh, particular set or, or map in that case. So basically, for example, with view model, in order to have uh, the view model provider uh, working, you were giving to that map different types of uh, view models. And obviously, depending on the activity or depending on where you were in the application, the model, the view model was going to be you know, a different type. And that's basically why it, it worked, because you didn't know what was going to be. Was, you were going to say, hey, you're going to have a, a map or, or a set or whatever you wanted to put it there. Uh, at, at some point, you are going to get some information there. With that information that might be different at different points in your app, do something with it. Um, and so, for example, like with dynamic feature modules, the same. Uh, you didn't know, like for example, if you were in an application, let's say, you don't know how many dynamic feature modules are at this point in time. But if you do something like multi-binding, you can have uh, multiple features, for example, let's say a list of screens. If each screen is in a different dynamic feature module, you might know how many screens are in your app if you try to add stuff to that multi-binding. So basically, it's just a, a, a escape hatch that, that we could call it, uh, just to have something flexible inside dependency injection. It is hard to use. Uh, the documentation is all, also very hard to, to understand, but, uh, but it's clear if you see like some examples of why you might use it. Yeah, I remember an uh, example of uh, Dagger that was built on top of uh, process of making coffee, of how to cook <laughs> coffee. Yeah, and uh, it was hard and uh, it was replaced maybe months or two ago uh, or two months ago to more understand uh, more understandable feature. Yeah, that, that's one of the, the things that we been focusing on when I joined Google. And, and that was like Android developers didn't have a proper Dagger guidance. And Dagger is used in 70% 70, 70 of top 1K or uh, 1K apps in the Play Store. It's a massive number. And yet we have no guidance. And so when, when I joined Google, I wanted to make sure that we have a proper story for dependency injection. And that's why now I'm also involved uh, in Hilt because I suffered all that uh, lack of documentation, all those problems with Dagger when I was working in my previous companies. So. That's something that we released last year. Uh, uh, I think it was November, more or less. And that, that's something that we needed to have, like a more comprehensive and understandable guidance, which uses Android examples for Android developers. Okay, and that's all for now. Let's summarize what we have. Uh, we have a new solution from Google. Uh, it's Dagger Hilt. Uh, the main uh, the main idea of the project is to simplify uh, cooking dagger in your project. Uh, you know about some limitation and working on them. You think about KSP. You know about Kotlin, and that's great. Uh, you are ready to accept uh, new feature proposals to simplify uh, working with it, and that's really great. I like it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great, thank you, Manuel, that you found time for us and uh, make introduction and answer important questions. Yeah, I th thank you for thank you for for having me. It's I had a, such a great time with you all. 
Uh, please feel free to reach out to me whenever you need. If you have any problems with health or you want to know anything more, uh, I'm, I'm here for you all. So thank you so much for having me in the show. Okay. I already added useful links uh, to description of the video. You can find uh, them. Uh, and uh, I will add some additional links that we already discussed uh, during uh, the episode. And right now I will switch in, uh, in Russian. <laughs> uh, ребят, всем большое спасибо, кто пришел. Uh, было действительно круто. Это был перво, первый англоязычный выпуск. Для меня был это красный крутой опыт. Я очень рад был пообщаться uh, с таким гостем. На самом деле узнал много нового для себя, интересного. Uh, хоть вы меня могли и знать как за ярым любителем коина, но я на самом деле в Хилте вижу достаточно много всего интересного, плюс я вижу, куда двигается uh, Google, они понимают свои проблемы и прочим, и текущее решение с Хилтом, мне кажется, намного интереснее, полезнее и uh, намного будет лучше для больших проектов, хотя в момент под капотом с компонентами пока немножко расстраивает. Вот. Uh, я хочу выразить... Всем большое спасибо за поддержку, подписывайтесь на YouTube канал, ставьте ваши лайки, они очень важны для развития канала, оставляйте комментарии, пишите, что вам больше нравится, Coin, Dagger, Dagger Hilt, возможно что-то другое, что мы не применяем, и попробуем потом сделать какой-то некий батл, собрать людей и устроить некий батл и потол потолковать за то, кто что лучше и кому что лучше зайдет. Подписывайтесь, подписывайтесь на наш телеграм канал. Там вы можете найти различные интересные новости касательно мира Android разработки Также большое огромное спасибо всем, кто поддерживает канал. Это множество людей, которые донатят каждый месяц, позволяют развивать канал, поддерживать сервисы, улучшать оборудование, делать много-много всего полезного. Ребят, большое вам спасибо. Если у кого-то есть желание, присоединяйтесь. Я надеюсь, что вы провели так же вечер полезно, как и я. И всем хорошего вечера! Пока-пока.